back on. What's up, guys? Nobody's on yet. We're going to give it a couple seconds. See if everybody comes on. Eddie says, Ryan does his best work in the dark. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, yeah, that is pretty funny. What's up? Tom is back. Make sure you guys comment once you're back on because it seems like now I can't see the quantity of people that are on because... You got to close that out and reopen it. No, maybe it's working now. I don't know. Hey, comment if you're back so I can see that you guys are jumping on here. Yeah. There we go. Okay, what's up, Jeff? What's up, Tom? There what's we up, go. the six other people that haven't commented? <laughs> All right, slow, slow to start here. But as I was saying, so we got banned, and it said, like, watch this video at the one minute and four mark. So I'm thinking, you know, and it says inciting violence. So I'm I, I thought, so remember, like, two weeks ago, we were sharing the story of Coco getting returned, the scammer. Yeah. And then Tiffany made the comment of the D-pick, send this guy a D-pick, and I was like, oh, I bet you that was it, man. Like, yeah. that had to have put us over the that line. That had to be what... You know, YouTube is so mad about that we're inciting violence. So I finally, like, I locate this video, right? Because they don't send you the link. They don't make any of this simple. They don't send you a link to the video. They tell you the name of it. But Ryan, you know, has all these crazy headlines that you're like, like, what does that mean exactly? Because he wants you to probably click on it. <laughs> so I find the video and I'm thinking, okay, this is probably going to be like a gruesome news story or something crazy that Ryan shared. Like the Would guy that got know? raped by the goat? Yeah. Would you know that this is a testimonial video from somebody from that a student. took the 21-day dry fire challenge, and there was a little clip of the dry fire challenge where Ryan is showing people how to draw from the holster. Mm. Oh, with, with, one, with one arm. Like, one arm is hurt. So he's showing people how to draw from the holster, and that's what they said was inciting violence. So I'm like, okay. Check, sure. check. Can you guys hear us good? Can everybody hear us good? Let me Low know. Volume. Oh, God. Tell me, can you guys hear us good? Can you not hear us? Terry is saying low volume. Terry, turn up your hearing aid. <laughs> so anyway, I, okay, good. You can hear us. So I am like, surely this is a mistake on YouTube's part. They cannot think that this is inciting violence. This is somebody who's very, very thin skinned that watched this and is thinking that this is, so I send in for review, right? Thinking this is going to get overturned for sure. Freaking like 30 minutes later, like we're standing by our thing. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Like how soft are you becoming? That's what soft I want to know. Soft is the answer. Like. Very, very soft. That's making me think of a lot of things. I shouldn't be. Yeah. Nobody <laughs> likes the limp wrist. Nobody likes the limp wiener. <laughs> okay. So it's interesting. Like if you guys, um, you know, Paisley has been really hustling and grinding. Yeah. To build her, uh, her TikTok account. And she finally got to like 1,000 subscribers and then it like really exploded. She got to 2,000 and then all of a sudden her TikTok account says, your TikTok account has been permanently suspended. There's no reason. And then it says, you can appeal this decision. There's no link to appeal it. There's no directions on how to appeal it, but they just ban it and turn it off. And I'm like, Paisley, welcome to our freaking world. Yep. Okay. So then she goes on YouTube. She goes live on YouTube for the minutes first later, time. Banned. Boom! You've been banned from live streaming for ninety days, and it's like, what, what the she, hell? What did she do? This is like a thirteen-year-old talking to her friends in her class yeah, on a live stream about makeup and oh my god, who man. knows what? This yeah. is so crazy because yeah. what they do is they make you like feel like you have to walk on such eggshells that you yeah. really can't say anything, can't do anything and because you got some nineteen-year-old. And I know, like, some people are like, oh, yeah, go on Rumble or Rumbly. I don't know how people say it. Everybody says it's Rumble. different. But, um, yeah, and I get it. But then, like, when you go on there, like, nobody joins you <laughs> and likes your video. Like, yeah. there's just not as much interaction on there. You know what, Mercedes? YouTube is kind of like being in an abusive relationship. Yeah. Like, you yeah. haven't done anything wrong, but they're just going to slap you around a little bit. And then you keep going back. And you just keep going back. You just keep going Why? back. Why? Why do I keep going back? Because I kind of need them. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, and it's like, that's where the, you know, you, you don't go fishing in the pond that has no fish or that has like one fish in the whole pond. You yeah. go fishing in the pond that's like stocked, right? It's got tons of fish because you want to catch a fish when you go fishing. You don't want to just throw your 
little worm in. I mean, sometimes you want to. Throw That's your why worm I was in. trying to look for a wife at a strip club. I figured <laughs> there's a lot of fish here. Is that, is that the kind of fish you want? No, it's not. Is that the fish you're looking for? Because I'd you, like to avoid That's herpes. not what you got, sweetheart. Chat. <laughs> okay, uh, so yeah, guys, use Rumble as a backup. Yeah, I, I, we could use it as a backup. This is the other thing. Like our streaming software and everything doesn't go there. Yeah, it doesn't connect with Rumble. Like, so only- I mean, that sucks because that's like our whole setup. Like we, you know, we have a setup. We have the slides. We have the a, a way we do things. And if we did that, we just to go like back old school, which. We're just not used to. Yeah. So, but we, we take it as a plan. With all that being said, I need off. you guys to go to YouTube <laughs> and subscribe to the Warrior Cloud YouTube channel. I need everybody to do it. There's 80 people on here. Everybody stop right now. <laughs> Ryan wants to see 80, 80 people subscribe. There's a reason. I need 100 people to go live to subscribe so that I can go live. I want to go live this Thursday to do a special training. Yeah. Even if you're not interested in being a gun instructor, you're not yeah. interested in growing a firearms instruction business. And you can unsubscribe later. No, only guy got to stay at 100, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we got to stay Go that. subscribe, Warrior Cloud YouTube channel. Check it out. Uh, there's some cool videos up there right now, so it's so it's pretty awesome. Yeah, and Ryan, well, you'll still share some, like, uh, stories, like, of your business failures and ventures and stuff. I mean, some people... Oh, yeah, some people some were people asking on here be before. Excited. They were like... How you remember I shared one time that I lost fifty thousand dollars in like the matter of months off of one decision. Yeah. I shared yeah. that I shared that story. Actually, it's not on there. Maybe I'll do that tomorrow. I was mad. I hinted at it, but yeah, 50 grand. This is no joke. Lost it in like a two month period. And this is not like we had like, you know, five million in the bank and we lost fifty grand. This is like fifty grand that we had to make payments on for yeah. like four years. Yeah, yeah. It was Bad. It didn't take four years. It took like eight months. Know. But it, it, it was bad. But I it was bad. Like, I didn't like it. But okay. I lost all of it. But yeah. there's also a video up there right now of how I epically lost like 150 grand. Yeah. Which was like a month before you've, I lost the 50,000. You've really <laughs> lost a lot of money. Like I could be driving. I could be driving a new car right now. We have a new car. Yeah, but you drive it. That's so, my, that's so I just want, listen, I want to share this story before... Before we move on. Okay, here we go. Okay. You I guys need, ready? Buckle up, man. I need, okay. Because you guys are here for real life talk. You're not just here for guns and stuff because eh, you hear that all the time on any channel. You're here for the special sauce. Okay. So I, you guys all know that I was driving a 2000 Mer- 2007 Mercury Mountaineer for years, right? So I, I liked it. It was good. Good car. But my air conditioning was going in and out and I had to use the pliers to turn it on and stuff. So then Ryan's like, we're going to get you a new car. Because he already bought, a year before that, he bought a, a, himself a new truck. What well, was a 2012 Chevy Silverado? But that was his truck. And I had the old Mercury Mountaineer. So we go to get Tiff a new car, okay? We drive all the way to Orlando because there's a really good deal on this GMC Yukon. So we check it out. We drive it. We love it. It's an amazing deal. And it's a 2020? 2020, yeah. We've never owned a vehicle that's like, we, every vehicle that we've ever bought was like 10 years old already or something like that, right? Or like eight years. So this is like nice, right? Big deal. So I'm like driving it. I'm like, oh yeah, I feel fancy in this. Like this is so nice. And then I'm like, oh my gosh, you could just turn the button and the air turns on. I don't have to get my pliers out. This is super sweet, right? So excited about this new vehicle. Then we get home and Ryan goes to go to class. And I said, what are you doing? And he said, I'm taking the GMC. I said, but that's like, shouldn't you be driving your truck? Hold on, the business Wait, stop. The business bought that car, okay. which means I am obligated no, 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 by no, the no. IRS to drive it to class or I can stop. go to jail. Do you want me to go stop. to jail? Is stop. that what you want? Fine, I don't know. Let's talk about that later. Might not be a bad thing. So. He says, oh, I got to take this to class. And I'm like, oh, okay. And I'm thinking like, this is going to be a one-time thing, right? Then next day, takes the vehicle again. He has not driven the truck except for like one time since we I bought it, it in Me? June. Stop. And now I'm driving. I'm not a dog. Now you don't just I, hold up your no, finger and say stop, stop to me. <laughs> Throw you a dog treat. So now I'm driving his truck. And he's got the new truck. And I'm like, really? I don't think that this is fair. Tell me in the comments, is it fair? (laughs) Okay, let's also clarify. How many times per week do you leave the house? 
Per week or per month? Per week. I'll be, I'd be willing to bet Tiffany leaves our house once, maybe twice in a week. A week? A month? Maybe. Like now, it's, now that I don't get my nails done, I don't go. I only go out. Like, it's very rare. I leave all the time. But when I go out, I want to drive the GMC, but then he's got it. So I got to drive the Silverado, which might I add, if you remember, two weeks ago. He backed into a gate and crushed the bumper. So now I'm like... Rescuing our dog from driving terrorists. Driving it, feeling a little like... Not, not so bougie anymore, okay? Not so bougie anymore. Yeah. So Okay, I want to know, Life and, or Death set made a very interesting comment, and oh. I'm... Like curious at what it what it means. So Tiff, how about a fifteen minute video about how to properly starch and iron a white dress shirt, then post it to Dropbox so a couple hundred thousand of us can open new channels with it? Am I missing something with that comment? Yeah, I don't I don't get it. Well, I don't get the Dropbox open new channels. I don't know. I feel like there's something there that I don't get. Oh wait a minute. He's saying open a new channel so that they can post a video. So I get what you're saying. And this is, uh, I think, I, I think I do. So I, I might go on a rabbit hole with this, but in the YouTube disclaimer, it says any attempt to circumvent this ban will have you like restricted for life. Oh, so in other words, like they said, you can't go on another channel because I was thinking, oh, we have another channel. We have a couple other channels. We have the Carrie University channel. We have like that. So I'm like, oh, maybe we can just go on another channel. They specifically tell you that if you try to circumvent the ban, that you will be banned. So it's not the life. channel banned. It's it's me personally I guess, banned. I guess because. Grow, the f- grow up, man. I, I don't know. That's what I'm thinking. So anyway. Warrior Cloud. So Warrior Cloud on YouTube. Yeah, you oh. just got to type in now. It doesn't pop up when you search it right away. Yeah, because it's not optimized. Just, it's all brand new. Yeah, he just made it. So, but that's fine. I'll deal with it. I usually drive a Mazda CX-7 twice a week. Well, that's a nice vehicle, isn't it? It's a nice little vehicle. I don't know. I used to buy weed from a guy that drove a Mazda. Tiff, he's gal- gaslighting you. That's not how the IRS rules work. Yeah, I know. I'm. S- I I might not look that smart, but I but I am. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is how it works. Uh, I talked to my. She needs my... a new Mustang. You know, I was looking at. I'll tell you this. You know, now that the kids are a little older, I, I didn't tell you, but when I was looking at vehicles, I was like, "Oh, maybe I'll get myself a little sports car." Yeah. Maybe I will, but then I was thinking, "Oh no," because then like they're gonna have to crawl in. Like a Ferrari. Know? All we have to do is <laughs> refinance our house, Tiffany, and no. pull out all of our money and investments, and we can buy one. No. So the the car that I really, really, really want. Okay. Like, I'm going to put it on my, what do you call Your those? Like board? Vi- On my vision board. Yeah, for real. Hey, that's, a, that's, a, I'm going to start praying f- for God for this car. I want the Cadillac, oh gosh, what is it? ST6. So it's like. XT5. Or X- XT6. XT5. Yeah. I don't know. One of those. Google it. But anyway, it's like a crossover kind of, you know, but it has, it still has a third row seat that's kind of small, but in case you have, you know, got to pack in some kids still, because I still do have kids. Um, but anyway, super nice looking car. And I Ryan had to go get something fixed on the GMC and the Buick or the Cadillac dealership was right there. So I made him walk over while he was waiting to drive it. And you drove one and you said it was pretty nice, right? It was nice, but it was a little trippy. What? So like the rear view mirror is not a real rear view mirror. It's not a mirror. It's actually a camera screen. Oh. So the camera is mounted on the back of the car. And when you look in the rear view mirror, That's you're seeing a fancy. camera screen. It is fancy because you can see like it's a hundred percent field of view. But every time I would look at it, I'm like, oh my god, I feel like I'm watching TV because it's like cartoony almost. Probably it's other people have that kind of stuff. But I'm sure you get haven't... used to it, but it's weird the first time. It was it was yeah. strange. But let's get into our stories tonight. We haven't had a lot of new technology yet, so okay. Oh my gosh, this guy is a rapper in Tampa Bay who uh, just recently got acquitted for shooting and killing two people. Now, here's the story. I'm going to try to remember this as best I can. So crazy. So this guy was at, he was in Lutz, I believe it was. Uh, He was at a recording studio. It was like 10 or 11 o'clock at night. And as he's like in the booth rapping, all that stuff, right? Is that how people rap? (laughs) No, you want to know how they rap in real life? (laughs) Blue, 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 blue. More money. Like that's pretty much rap today. So anyway, he's in there rapping 
and he alleges there were three men. There was a guy, I think his name was Meek, who owned the, the recording studio, which is apparently like a garage or okay. something. There was two other rappers there there. Okay. And the two rappers there kept saying to the owner, like, hey, uh, can we stay here and, and kind of hang out? And the owner was like, no, nah, you got to go because I have another artist coming to record after him. Okay. And like, you kind of got to go. Yeah. Running but he a said, business. they just kept kind of pushing, saying like, hey, bro, let us stay. But he said like, it was just kind of odd, right? So it was odd. And uh, they kept like whispering back and forth to each yeah. other. Mm -hmm. And finally, one of the men pulled, he heard them say that they were going to rob this guy. And one of them pulled out a gun. So yeah. this guy allegedly pulled out his firearm, shot and killed both these bad guys. Oh. So sounds like a pretty like legit clean shoot, right? Yeah. So just a few days ago, this guy was acquitted on the double murder so, charge. So wait a minute. He's the owner of the studio? He's the shooter. He's okay. the rapper who shot and killed the two the two men. Bad guys that were at the studio trying to do bad stuff. Gotcha. So he gets acquitted. He's on his way to go to his celebration party to celebrate not going to prison. And being acquitted. He's got his girlfriend who's pregnant five months old. Five months pregnant. Five months pregnant. <laughs> Not five months old. <laughs> they get into an argument. This dude pulls out a gun and shoots his pregnant girlfriend. Kills her. Police show up and he just openly admits. They said he had no emotion. Openly just admits. Uh, yeah, I, I shot her. I killed her. Yeah. What do you guys think about that in the comments? How insane is that? You know, it makes So me if that happened, like him doing the first part of shooting the other guys, like right there, you're like, oh, good guy, you know, pulled out the gun and did this, but he-, he It was... makes you really re-question the whole thing because it's like, what actually happened now? You yeah. clearly are an extremely dangerous individual. Yeah, to just shoot your pregnant girlfriend so you're killing your kid. And- too. The pregnant girlfriend had a baby in the car. I think the baby was 18 months old. Oh. And uh, as the mother died, okay, they, the police say that the 18-month-old kid was just left in the car and this scumbag was just kind of walking around or whatever. Mm. Yeah, zero respect for human life. Uh, in That's the head, really wasn't it? I'm not sure where he shot her. Probably. And I'm sure he's claiming self-defense again because Yeah, because he's, he's thinking, oh, I got, off, I got off it the first time. Yeah. Yeah. Just get off again. I mean, that's crazy. Absolutely insane. Wow. Makes wow. you really think, you know, we've had several uh, domestic violence, uh, mm -hmm. like students in the class recently. Lots. And, um, you know, it scares me. Like, um, it scares me to think mm -hmm. that these young women are going through it. And it makes me wonder, like, as a father, I know how I'm going to react, but... It also makes me scared of how I'm going to react. Exactly, because it's such a high emotion moment that and it's like yeah. you find out that somebody's, you know, hurting your baby girl or stuff like that. I mean, that's going to be hard to really control it. And Maybe you don't. Well, Maybe you don't. Maybe you just. Yeah, here's something that I find really interesting, Lisa. So in the article, this guy was charged with killing a five-month-old baby. Uh, uh, and the article actually says baby, which I find just hilarious because they always say it's not a baby, right? But whatever. Mm -hmm. So they killed a five-month-old baby. So he was charged with killing the baby, charged with killing the mother, and then like uh, probably I would assume reckless endangerment for the kid that was there. So once again, two murders. Yeah. Wow. So four people in like, wow. A matter That's of months. That's crazy. Yes, does not have the temperament to be a gun owner. 100% agree with that. Yeah. yeah. Or the the knowledge or anything like that. Because like if he's just like, oh, yeah, it was self-defense, you obviously do not understand how that works and what you can do within the law, which a lot of people are just so confused about. Yeah, it's funny. I had a guy in the concealed carry class Saturday. He was there with his wife and, or girlfriend, I, but somebody. Um, and he kept saying things. And I was like, actually, sir, that's none of that mm -hmm. is correct. So I was explaining something, answering somebody else's question. And he goes, well, actually, this law does this. And I said, I'm sorry, sir, what you're referring to, you're articulating in a wrong way. Yeah. This is actually what it says. And this is what it means. And it's funny because he was actually getting upset right. at the fact that I was Beca correcting him. Correcting him, yeah. But I have a lot of people in the room, right? And I can't allow this guy to now spout spout all this nonsense. That's incorrect. That's going to really confuse everybody else. Yes. 
And uh, anyway, I could tell he but wasn't happy or impressed. Not everybody can read the law and understand it. And that's why your book was so good for so many people, right? Because it took the law and then it broke it down into like, okay, like here's a situation for, you know, for instance, or for example. Um, so here, I'm going to read you this because before you move on to the next question, because it came in like a few minutes before the live started. And I'm okay. like, okay, we don't have time for this, but it fits perfectly into this. Okay. So, okay, this is from Rich. He said, I have read Ryan's book on Florida Concealed Carry Law. I got into a disagreement with a coworker about protecting your property. So he says, the coworker said that a person was playing golf and his golf ball landed on someone's property and he went to retrieve it. The owner of the property is allowed to come out with an AR-15 and threaten deadly force and point the gun at the person. That makes sense. And then he said, the sheriff department came and told the person that the owner has the right to shoot him under the Castle Doctrine law. The sheriff's department said that? What a bunch of idiots. Allegedly. Yeah. Right? Every time you're like, no, that's not the correct. You're like, oh, yeah, the sheriff came out. He told me I could do that. Okay. Well, there's two things here, okay? One, you can't. Two, even if the sheriff told you, you don't listen to it. The sheriff doesn't study Florida concealed carry law. They don't. They they know like a small part that they took when they, but they don't know. They don't stay up to date on the laws. They're not, they don't understand it. So you don't just get charged with murder and then go to court and be like, oh yeah, sheriff told me. You, where, how far do you think that's going to get you? It's going to get you nowhere. It's going to get you locked up. So there is this, there is this huge misbelief, right? When my cousins came down from Canada, they're like, so if somebody walks on your property, you could shoot them, right? And we're like, uh, no. People think that if somebody walks on your property to, I don't know, freaking pick up a leaf, freaking get, you know, get something that blew in your yard. So what? My dog craps in your yard and I go to pick it up. Pow, 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 pow. Like <laughs> she was, you know, I could shoot her. She was on my property. Like that is not the way it works, nor do we want it to be. I don't, like yeah, that. I don't even want to live in a society want it to that's be like that. Like that. Okay. That is not good. So, there is a huge misconception about the Castle Doctrine. Yeah. Do you want to just kind of give like a quick snapshot of what the Castle Doctrine allows you to do and how and why? Sure. Yeah, so the Castle Doctrine uh, is the uh, law that gives us the right to use or threaten the use of deadly force if a person enters or attempts to enter a person's residence, dwelling, or occupied vehicle. But they can't just enter a residence, dwelling, or occupied vehicle. They have to enter those uh, locations in a very specific way. They have to enter unlawfully. They have to enter by force. And the final requirement is that the use of deadly force has to be a reasonable response. Mm. Um, So that's what people just don't understand. So, like, the Castle Doctrine does not apply to your front yard. To picking up a golf It doesn't apply to your backyard at all. Those two locations have nothing to do with the Castle Doctrine. So Castle Doctrine is only the residence, which is where you live, your dwelling, which is a place you're residing at night that's designed for you to reside at night, or an occupied vehicle. And it's not occupied. One of the questions we're going to answer tonight is, what if somebody's breaking into your car? Am I allowed to shoot them? Well, if your kid is in the car and the bad guy's breaking in, then yeah, because the vehicle's occupied. As long as they're entering unlawfully and by force and their use of deadly force is reasonable, then we have a right to uh, to defend our, our loved ones, right? But if there's nobody in the vehicle, like, you just need to walk away. Call the police. Let the police do their job. Mm-hmm. Uh, does and that make sense? And let the insurance handle it. Yes. So, like, our backyard, like, we don't have a fence. Nope. Right? So, the neighbor. And there's people in my backyard all the time. <laughs> the neighbor's dog will come running, right, across our yard. Their puppies will come running across our yard when they let them outside. And then they got to come run into our yard and go grab their dogs, right? Happens, like, all the time. You can't just put out a gun and be like, pow, pow, pow. And shoot a five-year-old little girl. <laughs> Castle doctrine. Like, it doesn't it's... matter the age. Like, it's just not. But to even think that somebody thinks that that is, that that is okay. is scary. Is scary, right? And it, and that's when it's like, yes, I get the whole everybody has the right and stuff like that. But when is that really somebody that you want to have a firearm? That's like, oh, this kid, because it actually happened in Texas or something like that. These school age kids, like I'm talking eight years old. Oh, are you talking about the ones that yes. cut across the guy's lawn and he cut, shot and killed? No, him? Yeah. never cut. It's not his lawn though. It's like his field. Like, it's not even his lawn. You know, it's a big difference if you're cutting right through the house. But it was like the kids were cut, basically a shortcut home from school. 
So they went across like his kind of like way backyard. It was a big yard, right? In the back. And yeah, he shot at them, which is just insane. Like these, and he knew there were little kids. He talked to them before, said, don't come across my yard. But you know how kids are. They're like, whatever. I don't want to walk a whole mile around. So they would cut across, but he shot at them. And it's so crazy to think that really because kids are, eight-year-old kids are walking past your property, you're going to shoot at them. Like, this is not the kind of world that I want to live in. Yeah, so Alan has an interesting question. He says, what if there's a gun in the car or truck? Uh, None of that matters. So again, the Castle Doctrine Mm -hmm. says you have a right to use or threaten the use of deadly force if a person is entering or attempting to enter a dwelling residence or occupied vehicle unlawfully by force and the use of deadly force a reasonable response. It doesn't matter if there's a gun in the car. That's your fault, right? Mm -hmm. Like when we own the gun store, well, I would say we probably had three to five people every month contact us saying like, hey, my gun got stolen out of my car. Can you give me the serial number so I can report it stolen? It was like a consistent thing. You should never leave guns in the car. Number one, you should never have guns off of your body in the car unless you're driving to the gun range or coming home. Yeah, A gun should never be left, in my opinion, in the glove box, center console, zippered gun bag. It should never be because yeah. you're never going to get to that gun fast enough. Yeah. So I got, an, I got a text message the other day from Cal from when we owned the gun store. You probably don't remember him, but I remember him because he bought several guns from so us. So I remember the name, but who, describe him to me. Who, who is it? So, um, like, darker skin. What, is he uh, the guy that always did reloading and, like, did the muzzle loading stuff? Uh, I, don't th- I don't think okay. so, but it was, like, almost, I, I can't explain his, like, nationality. Probably, like, kind of, like, Hawaiian or something like that. Like, anyway, he texted and was like hey you probably don't remember me because this is like eight years ago but i tell you what i have a memory of an elephant and i'm like oh yeah hey cal i remember you so he bought a bunch of guns from us and he said he went to philippines or taiwan or something and he came back and his house is broken into and all his guns are gone so he's like i didn't do my due diligence he's like would you happen to have the serial numbers i said listen when we closed the gun store we sent all of our records to the National whatever Gun Registry in Virginia. I said, National Records Library, Thank Tiffany. You. Chill out before we blow oh, up yeah. these comments. <laughs> Sorry. So I said, they are in a box in that room, never to be found again. I said, there's no way to track them. There's, no, there's nothing I can do. So I was just thinking that because I was going to tell you guys, if you don't have that stuff kind of written down in your safe. He's like, I wish I would have done it because the cops are asking for the serial numbers now so they can track it if they come into the pawn shop or something like that. But he has nothing. So now there's nothing they can do. So if you do, you know, if you do have firearms that didn't get lost in a boating accident, then it's a good idea to have that stuff written down in case, in case somebody does get them or steals them that you can at least report the actual serial numbers. Yeah. Just thought of it. All right. Never really think of that kind of stuff. If you guys want to ask me a question and you want to do it by using your voice, which is always really cool, all you got to do is go to ask. Is that right? Ask.tampacarry.com. What is the real URL? It's just tampacarry.com. TV. Forward slash TV. Yeah. Okay. So we'll fix that for next week. But anyway, you can go there. You can press record and record the button. So here is the first question. Hey, Ryan. Let's say I see someone breaking into my car in my apartment's parking lot and I witnessed them break open the window and climbing into the driver's seat. This would be a forcible felony, no? Could I just go out there and shoot them dead while they're doing that? Would that be lawful? Uh, What would you do? Thank you. Okay, so... I find that to be really funny. So basically what he was saying, Tiff, is he sees somebody breaking into his car in his apartment complex, climbing over the driver's seat. Not sure why that matters. <laughs> and he says, this would be a forcible felony, right? Uh, no, this is not a forcible felony. A forcible felony is treason, murder, manslaughter, sexual battery, carjacking, home invasion, robbery, robbery, burglary, arson, kidnapping, aggravated assault, aggravated battery, aggravated stalking. Um, unlawful throwing or discharging a destructive device or bomb or any other felony that involves the use of physical force or violence against any individual. None of that has to do with breaking into somebody's car. Say that again. Right? Just joking. I could have said it a thousand <laughs> times. I know. You've said it a thousand times. Okay, so none of that has to do with breaking into a car. So it is definitely not a forcible felony. We just, in the previous video, were talking about the Castle Doctrine. And the Castle Doctrine says 
We have a right to use or threaten the use of deadly force if somebody is entering or attempting to enter a dwelling residential occupied vehicle and they have to be entering unlawfully and by force. But because there's nobody inside of the vehicle, it's an empty vehicle sitting in the parking lot. Even if they come up and just smash the windshield and come in, there's really nothing that you can do. So he goes on to say, um, would it be, can I just go out there and shoot them dead? Do you really want to do that? Like, let's let's really take a step back here, everybody, and let's really think about why we have our firearms. We have our firearms to defend the lives of innocent people. We do not have guns because somebody broke the window of your car and is stealing your iPod charger mm-hmm. or whatever. Like, you know, I think one of the things I think gun owners don't think about is because TV and movies have like glamorized what it's like to kill somebody. You know, most of the people that I know that have uh, killed other people in combat, in law enforcement, or in self-defense, they don't think they're gonna struggle with it. Like we have one friend, his name is Chris, and Chris was in the first Gulf War in Iraq, and he was young, right? And during the Gulf War, one of the things that was happening is the uh, army guys would be out, and he was special forces, they'd be out there on patrols or whatever, and they were like, um, um, Iraqi soldiers would approach the tanks and the vehicles, Mm -hmm. pretending that they were surrendering, and then they would detonate an IED and blow up the tank and kill everybody there. So they basically instituted this policy like, stay back away from the vehicles. Mm -hmm. If they keep approaching the vehicles, you shoot them, because they are clearly trying to detonate an IED, Mm -hmm. right? So he was out on patrol one day, and uh, there's, I don't know how many, I'm just gonna make up a number, but say there's like five Iraqi dudes approaching the vehicle, and they've got their hands up and stuff, and they kept telling them, like, stop. Stop. Do not get close to this tank. Stop, Mm -hmm. back up, like, we'll come to you, stop. But he said they wouldn't listen. Mm -hmm. They just kept coming. So he had, he just opened up, and he killed all of them. Um, and he said, you know, Ryan, it's interesting because it didn't affect me when I did it Mm -hmm. because I knew I was saving everybody's lives in here. Right. But he said, then we went down and we like, uh, searched the bodies and they actually didn't have any explosives. Mm -hmm. So these guys really were trying to just Mm -hmm. surrender. So he said, I felt a little bit bad, but still you should have listened to the directions. Right. He said, it didn't hit me until I had my first child. What's his kid's name? Well, it doesn't matter because they live in the local area, I guess. But so he had his first kid and he said, after, as he was looking at his son in the hospital room, what triggered in his brain is he said, one of the, guy, the guys that I killed were all about my age when I killed them. Mm-hmm. And they would be having children at about the same time. Mm-hmm. And he said, they're not gonna have kids now because I shot them. And he said, it was several years of going to counseling and therapy to really work through that. So five years of it doesn't matter, and it was just an afterthought, to now it's like a massive emotional thing for him to work through, right? Taking somebody's life, humans were never designed to do this, right? We were never designed to take people's lives. Uh, So it's always gonna hurt. And we want to avoid that. Mm -hmm. Does everybody agree in these comments? Am I like making sense or am I totally speaking uh, out of my ass here? Yeah, and I think it's a little easier for you to justify and put your head down at night when, you know, somebody's attacking you or your family and it really is a life or death situation because then you can say, like, I had to do it. It was them or me. But stealing a car or stealing, you know, something off your yard or a kid walking across your yard or somebody coming to get a golf ball. Like, when you lay down at night, are you saying, like, I had to do that? Like, that's going to eat you up. It's just... Yeah, I don't think people understand the magnitude. And and then what's... And and sorry to interrupt, but like also the whole thing, like now you don't just, I mean, now you're seeing somebody like struggle to breathe, laying on your driveway. Flopping around. Flopping around, like asking for help maybe if they're still, you know, moving or whatever. Like there's a lot that goes into this, right? It's not, and then the police are coming. Now you're getting interviewed. Now you're getting brought in. Now you're getting a lawyer. Like it is a whole thing. And now you get to meet this person's children. Mm -hmm. You got to meet their wife and you got to see the kid crying saying Doing interviews on TV. My dad was just trying to get the golf ball out of the man's yard and the yeah. man just killed him. We don't know why the man yeah. killed him. Yeah. Like, is that really what you want to deal with? Yeah. So 
with the car, the best thing that you can do, one, you can set off the alarm from your window, right, on your on your fob, right? So you can set off the alarm. You can be a good witness. You can call 911. You can start videotaping. You can try to get, like, any information about them. What are they wearing? What are they, you know, what do they look like? Any clues so that they can post it on the news and catch the sky, you know, later. But there's a whole lot of things. You can even open up your window and yell out your window, hey! And that'll, you know, the person will like jump and probably run. So there's all these things that you can do besides going outside and actually, you know, I say besides going outside, period. Do not go outside. You do not want to go outside because that is even if you have a gun, very massive high emotion moment. And that can go bad quickly, quickly, quickly. So I would advise like stay in your locked house. Be a good witness. And yeah, so I am Gabriel says uh, an interesting question. So after a self-defense shooting, uh, we got our firearms confiscated, obviously. Do you get your guns back? I've heard some people say that you don't. Well, those people just mm. don't know what they're talking about. Yeah, you. Uh, if, you're not, if you're not guilty or if the case is dropped or whatever, it's your property. The state has to give you the guns back. Now, what potentially happens is law enforcement agencies lose evidence quite mm-hmm. a bit from what I hear. Yeah. And um, it's very common. Obviously, they're not in there cleaning and maintaining your gun. So it's probably going to have some rust and stuff when you mm-hmm. get it back. Uh, and potentially, they might lose it or misplace it. Now, I've, I don't believe cops are out there just stealing people's mm-hmm. firearms or evidence. I don't think that's what's happening. But I think that um, stuff just gets misplaced or whatever sometimes. But yes, if you're found, like look at the Trayvon Martin shooting, right? Mm-hmm. George Zimmerman, I believe he had a Keltec P11 is what he committed that shooting with. Yeah, it was. After the trial and he was found not guilty, they gave that gun back to him. And if you guys remember, he ended up selling that gun for like $120,000. That's annoying. Which is not just annoying. It's very disgusting and sick at yeah. uh, at that people would want to buy the gun just because of uh, of that. It's just very yeah. gross that, that there yeah. are people like that exist. Yep. Exactly. Yeah, so uh, Patty says they stole Kyle Rittenhouse's yeah. gun for a year, uh, but that's because the trial was yes. pending, right? Like they're yeah, not going to give like it back until the evidence is right? over. Right? If you're in a in a shooting, I mean, they take your firearm. So, yeah. So somebody said that's why I have two. Exactly. You should have an extra one for yep. sure. <laughs> At least one extra one. Okay, so this guy decided to walk into a hotel in Texas. <laughs> With a very terrible gun to commit a robbery. How much money do hotels have? Probably that's not. That's not like a lot of cash happening Listen, at a hotel. Listen, these robbers are not smart. It's not like they're thinking through this stuff and really, yeah. yeah. So this is what happened. Releasing video of a hotel robbery attempt. Now you've got to see it. HPD says this guy walks into the hotel off the Katy Freeway. This was January 16th. Yeah, it's like a he has got a very action. big rifle. You can see him hop up on the counter at the front desk. He demands the hotel clerk open the cash register. There he goes. Now she does open the register, but police say off camera, we don't see it. The clerk grabs her own handgun and you see what happens. He scurries away in a hurry after that. Here's another angle of him hightailing it out of there once she pulls her own gun. Now he's got something over his face, a hoodie and everything. Like, go to college, he, he bro. He wins the most awkward. He looks like freaking Gumby or whatever. He's, like, so awkward. Yeah. <laughs> My gosh, I hate to laugh at him, but it's yeah. funny. So, thank God that that uh, person, the Lady. woman behind yeah. the counter, like, actually had her firearm. Yes. She was able to get it oriented and out of the holster fast enough. So, she popped open the cash drawer, right, to kind of distract him, and then she grabbed her gun and started shooting at him, and it was just perfect, like, Awesome. Love yeah. to see stories like that where you get a taste of your own medicine. Nobody died, which, you know, you have every right to freaking kill the guy. I like, don't care if the bad guy. you see how awkward he was, though? Like, he had never held a rifle before. Like, he's like, okay, you know, getting it ready before he goes in. Like, super, super awkward. So this is why I don't know where I heard this, but the quote says, never be afraid of a gangbanger with a gun. Be afraid of a redneck with a gun. Yeah, because they've they been shooting it. since they they're five. Yeah, right. Yeah, but it doesn't take. I mean, it doesn't take much for a bad guy to just point and shoot too. You know. Like, sure, you but you don't have to be that smart. The dude is like struggling to even yeah. chamber around to get the stock folded. Like, yeah, yeah, it's that was pretty terrible. Crazy. Uh, yeah, yeah. And Drew, you're right. Usually, stories like this don't make the news, and exactly. frankly, there's so many of them. 
Uh, just this last week, I can't remember what stories we had happen, but I mean, it's every week we hear crazy stuff from students about violent mm -hmm. that attacks, road rage. Not on the news, though. Never on the news, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But they have, like, so much stupid stuff on the news. Like, it's it, it's ridiculous. You know what? The news now is like watching entertainment tonight. When okay. I was, when I was like, 20, you know, 17, 18, I used to watch entertainment tonight. Because now it's like Kim Kardashian. Yeah, it's just like, it's, it's like stuff to entertain you versus, like, you got to watch, like, the... Uh, what's it called? Like the world news channels and stuff. We'll and see what's you funny get, like, is. like some real news and you're like, oh, wow. Like this is real news, right? Because like, it's funny when we go to Canada, the news in Canada is very different than news in America because news in Canada is like, this is what happened in Indonesia today. There was a car bombing and this terrorist attack or whatever. This is what happened in Australia. And it's like, oh my God, dude. In America, we would never hear about what's happening in other countries. It's Unless very rare. Unless you go rare. to like the, yeah, the world news. Very news. rare. But in Canada, it's like all of the news is this is what's happening around the world. Mm -hmm. That was just a station that my parents probably were listening to, but yeah. Okay, well, it's freaking made some sense <laughs> to me, man. All right. <laughs> okay. Next one. Next question. Hey, Ryan, you guys are awesome. Okay, this question is in a strictly legal sense, not whether it's wise to do so. Okay, can a Florida resident with a concealed carry license carry a pistol in the console of their car, say in the cup holder even, as long as it's concealed with, say, a t-shirt or a hat or what have you? Period. Okay, so I love at the end of this guy's recording, Tef, how he goes, period. I know, he didn't know. He, listen. What I was thinking is he's probably just like me and he uses voice to text all the time because I have such a hard time leaving a voicemail for somebody or something like that because I'm always like, hey, this is Tiffany explanation mark. And I'm like, oh, no, sorry. And then I do my thing and I'm like, all right, have a great day, period. Oh, I feel so embarrassed. Yeah. Because I, yeah, it's like you get so used to doing something. It's funny how, how that happens. Okay, so his question was, Having a firearm inside of the uh, cup holder with just a t-shirt over it because okay. that is now concealed. So if you have a firearm inside of your vehicle, it has to be secure, a handgun inside of your vehicle, it has to be securely encased or not readily accessible for immediate use. So securely encased means the firearm has to be inside of something. So it could be inside the glove box, center console, zippered gun bag, snapped in a holster, Something of that nature. And it could be loaded, unloaded, locked, or unlocked. This is with a concealed carry permit? With or without a permit. Okay. It doesn't matter. Okay, so, uh, or the firearm can be not readily accessible. So not readily accessible means you cannot access a firearm as fast as if it was on your person. So if, I'm going to ask you guys this question. Get ready on your keyboard to type it in. If I had a firearm, I'm the only one in the car. I have my gun out of the holster and it's just sitting on the passenger seat. Is that legal? Tell me in the comments. Yes, if you think yes. No, if you think no. Okay, and there's nothing, there's no t-shirt on top of it or anything like that. Because he asked. Because like, that doesn't some... matter. Okay, because I was just clarifying because he said that. Yeah. So do you guys think, can I have a firearm, a pistol, handgun, sitting on the passenger seat, not in the case, nothing like that? I'm not going to move on until I get some answers. Okay, and I'm going to side on, note Tiff. this. While you're waiting for answers, though, do you remember last week's story? Well, the week before, because we are banned last week. Yeah, about, the guy whose dog shot him. Yeah, because he had his hunting rifle there loaded and not with, you know, securely in Okay, nobody's answering my question, which means you guys don't know. Don't know. Uh, so tell him. No, you cannot have the firearm sitting on the passenger seat because it is not securely encased, it's not in something, and it is as easy to access as if it was on your person. Mm -hmm. But what if that handgun was in the very back of my SUV and it is my SUV? My SUV, not your SUV, remember? Oh, I'm like, why does it matter if it's your SUV if you're riding with your buddy? <laughs> doesn't okay. If it's in the back of my vehicle, does it have to be in a case? No, it does not have to be in a case. it's not readily accessible. It's not readily accessible. And the word is or, not and. So securely encased or not readily accessible. Okay. Now this is Mama Bear going to school you all. Just have it in a holster. Just have it in a holster. Always. Snapped in a holster. Snapped in a holster. Like, 
because there's a few things that can go wrong here. Like if you get an accident and you're rolling, right? Do you really want a firearm bouncing around in a your car, a handgun. loaded gun bouncing around in your car? Like, I don't know if you've ever been in an accident, but it's very violent. Like, I mean, that car, it's going to slam like thing that that pistol is going to freaking hit the roof, hit the dash, hit the freaking. And do you really want that flying around your vehicle? Like, no, cover the trigger guard, cover the trigger guard. Yeah. Cover the trigger guard. Always. Okay, so then his question was also like, can I put a t-shirt over it? So uh, part of the requirement is that uh, the firearm needs to be not visible to the ordinary side of another person. So like in my vehicle, you're it's a bigger vehicle, you're probably not gonna be able to look in and see that there's a firearm like in the cup holder or whatever. Let's say it's in a Kydex holster, it's snapped in and it's sitting in the cup holder. Yes, that's legal as long as it's not visible to the ordinary side of another person. But if a, uh, I'm in a little tiny, you know, uh, rice burner like Tom Cigars drives. You don't know what he drives. He's Asian, I know what he drives. <laughs> okay, then everybody can probably look into the vehicle and see, you know, what's going on. Um, so that would not be legal because it is readily visible to the ordinary side of another person. Right. Does that make sense? Yes. Is everybody getting this? Because nobody's be commenting. Taken as like threatening or whatever that there's yeah uh, a gun there. It's okay. People are listening. They no, don't the need comments to... have totally stalled. That's how do you know? I because I'm trying to click to type something and it won't work. No. Oh. Type, type a comment. Type a comment so we can see if the comment stalled. Quick, Tom. Type a comment. Okay. So it's okay if the comments are not there. Um. Go. I forgot what I was going to ask now because you're distracting me. Um, yeah, I forgot what I was going to ask. There we go. Gotcha. Okay, so now it's working now that I reset it. We see you there. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. So let's jump into this peeping Tom thing. This is so scary. Yeah, so this is an incident that happened right in downtown Tampa, Seminole Heights area. And... Um, this is a young woman. She's sitting in her house on her computer working. And have you ever had the feeling like that gut feeling that somebody is staring at you? Mm -hmm. She had that feeling, decided to check her ring doorbell. Ooh, you know what? You did not put it in there. Are you kidding? Maybe I don't have the video for some reason. Oh. Oh, I might've totally screwed that up. So anyway. Okay, let me tell the story, okay? Cause I watched the video several times, super creepy. So she's this very pretty young lady. She's married. I don't think she has any kids. So she's sitting in her house alone, right? And she's sitting at the couch with her laptop typing, like on the coffee table. And she gets this gut feeling or whatever it is. So she goes to check her ring doorbell. This dude was standing watching her in her window for 20 minutes. He moves around a few times. He adjusts his waist like he's... Adjusting, you know, private Cronin assumed she was in oh, a two way conversation then, with her boss by phone. Um, so I was working and I was on work calls. Video. And while I was on the phone oh, with my boss, I saw a ring notification two minutes prior. This is what her cameras were seeing. Monday night at 7 31 and 19 seconds, this man walked up to her front door and helped himself to a view through her window. Eight minutes later, she believes this sound is him testing the doorknob. This is what he would have seen looking in. If it was unlocked, what would he have done next? After watching a woman by herself in her home. At one point, he turns and adjusts his waistband. By the time she realized he was there, it was almost 7.50. And I told him to stay on the phone with me and that, you know, I said, holy heck, you know, I've been for 20 minutes, somebody's been watching me on the porch. By the time she went to the door, he was on the sidewalk. Don't come on my front porch again. Don't be looking at my house. Get out of here. Indeed, TPD came out and found 27-year-old Jordan Davis. Rachel says she's disappointed the officer didn't immediately take him into custody. The officer, who TPD says had not yet seen all the video, initially considered it a trespassing violation and warned him to stay away. Because I felt like nothing had been done. After more fully analyzing the video, 
TPD issued an arrest warrant Thursday on suspicion of voyeurism and loitering and prowling. Uh, we're hoping that anyone who sees him will reach out to Tampa police so that we can make an arrest and prevent this from happening to anyone else. After serving time for burglary, Davis had only been out of jail for six days before this happened. He needs help and he needs to be in a facility where he's not going to do this to somebody else. Rachel says she's speaking out to urge others to lock their... Okay, so the big question is, what can you do in this situation? It's so scary. That just makes my heart race. Now, again, let's talk about the Florida Castle Doctrine Law. A person has a right to use or threaten the use of deadly force if a person is entering or attempting to enter a dwelling, residence, or occupied vehicle. So is this scumbag attempting to enter a residence? Yeah. Okay. So the next requirement is that he has to be entering the residence unlawfully. Does this man have a legal right to be inside of that residence? No. He does not. Next requirement is he has to be entering the residence by force. Is he attempting to enter the residence by force? This is where I always get stuck. So a Florida court has ruled that if a door is shut and unlocked, if they are turning a doorknob, that is classified as a forcible entry in Florida. Okay. So yes, this is classified as a forcible entry uh, under Florida law, in my opinion. The final requirement is, is the use of deadly force a reasonable response? If I am a young lady inside my house and somebody, a stranger, walks in to my house, I'm freaking terrified. Yeah. I am terrified, like, right away for my life. What are you doing? What are you doing in my house? You didn't knock. You didn't. I mean, there's no reason for you to be here. Yeah. So one of the be- one of the benefits of the Florida Castle Doctrine law that makes it so amazing is that the, people always get confused because they're like, if this guy just comes into my house and he doesn't have a weapon, I can't do anything. So the Florida Castle Doctrine law gives us the presumption of fear of death and great bodily harm just because they 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 met those requirements. Mm-hmm. They entered unlawfully, entered by force, and the use of deadly force is reasonable. Yeah. We have a presumption of fear of death and great bodily harm. Bad guy doesn't have to have a weapon. Mm -hmm. We have a right to defend ourselves. And I mean, like, sorry, but uh, a man compared to a a woman like that, and do you know she has no chance? This this guy got out of prison six days prior to this incident for burglary. I did not know that. Yes, six days prior to the burglary, the dude just got out of jail. Wow, that's insane! Insane. So yeah. we got a message from uh, Anastasia. I didn't have time to put it up here, but one of our students. And, uh, you know, Anastasia has had, when I first met her last year, uh, she was coming to us because she got a new apartment mm-hmm. and uh, t- two people had tried to break in through a window. She's on mm-hmm. the first floor oh, into her apartment. Her? You remember? Oh, yes, 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 yes. So her message today was like, what am I allowed to do? If I catch somebody like peeping on me, what am I allowed to do? Now, ultimately, my opinion is if somebody is just like being creepy and looking through your window, you can't just bust mm-hmm. out an AK and, and turn this into Fallujah. You need to call the police, let the police come and handle and arrest this dude and, and kind of handle it. Mm-hmm. It's only if they enter the dwelling residence occupied vehicle unlawfully and by force and the use of deadly force is reasonable that we can actually use a gun. Uh, but just because they're like watching you, peeping on you, it's creepy, it's weird, uh, but- it's Scary as shit. Call the police. So this guy here, now he's just going to get like a trespassing and then he's going to be out doing this again. No, it's more than trespassing. So he got peeping and he got, there was like three or four charges on there. Okay. But what's also f- interesting here is when the police originally came, they thought this was only a trespassing charge. Mm. So they told this guy, just leave. You can't come back here again. And they just left him. But then they watched the whole video. They haven't caught this guy yet. So they watched the video again. And the homeowner, that young woman, she was so upset and so pissed off. The police yeah. didn't arrest him. Right. That uh, that she just caused a ruckus. Yeah. And now the police are like, okay, we messed up. We should have arrested him for all these different crimes. And now they're trying to find the guy. Oh, yeah, yeah. But yeah. listen, it's a career criminal. You're not going to find this dude. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh, super scary. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and scary to think of what would have happened if that door wasn't locked. Next question. And the question is not playing for some reason. 
Somebody said, oh, that caller looks just like Ryan. <laughs> yeah. Good looking. All right. So I'll read you guys his question since the audio is not uh, not working. Let's see here. So my question for you is Florida legislature is proposing the constitutional carry bill, which is going to mean you don't have to have a concealed carry license to carry a gun if it passes. What does this mean for us? He means people that already have a permit. What is the benefit of having a permit? Okay, so even if constitutional carry passes, which is still an if, we don't really know yet. Mm -hmm. uh, If it passes, most people are still going to want to get a carry permit. And here's the reason. Uh, If you are traveling with your firearm out of state, the constitutional carry allows you to carry the firearm in the state of Florida without any type of license, but you still have to have a valid Florida concealed carry permit to carry the firearm in the 38 other states across the nation. Okay, Mm -hmm. so that's reason number one. Reason number two, would you guys agree that most smart gun owners are going to want to have a deep understanding of the law before they start walking around with a gun. Mm -hmm. I think they are, right? Yeah. And I think because they want that deep understanding, do you remember the Michael Draca shooting? Mm -hmm. So Michael Draca, he's the guy who uh, decided he was going to be like the parking lot police in Clearwater. Like a mall cop for the parking lot. Yeah, and anytime somebody parked illegally in a handicapped spot, uh, Michael Draca would stop his car and he would like harass him and make a move, right? So uh, then M- Michael Draca was like harassing and arguing with Brittany Jacobs, which Brittany is a bad person. So I'm not saying she was justified in anything. I think she's a bad, evil person, but she's yeah, arguing I, with Draca. Huh? I don't know if I'd say evil. I mean, she's just a smart ass. She was, you know. We, kn- we know. I watched the whole trial. We know that she instigated all of that. And like most of this is her fault. But anyway, so she instigated it. Michael Drake is arguing with her. Her boyfriend, Marquise, comes outside, shoves Drake onto the ground. Drake hits the ground, pulls out a gun, shot Marquise in the side. Bullet went through both of his lungs, through his heart, and he died like five minutes later. Mm-hmm. Uh, during the trial, the prosecutor asked, uh, you know, some interesting questions. They said, when did Drake, uh, Mr. Drake, uh, get his concealed carry permit? And they said something like 1988 or something. And they said, when do you think the last time Mr. Draca had firearms training was? And they said, he hasn't had any. He has had zero professional firearms training since mm. 1988. Yeah. They hammered Michael Draca with that during the trial. And you guys have to remember, the jury is never going to be made up of people like us. Never. People that are gun people. We get kicked out. It's going to be made up of very non-gun people who mm-hmm. already believe guns are very dangerous. We all know that, right? Guns are extremely dangerous in the hands of somebody who lacks the proper training. And they're going to paint that case because you don't have any training or you haven't had training in X number of years mm-hmm. that you are ill-equipped for this situation. Yeah. Okay? And that's another major reason why smart people are going to want to have a carry permit. The other big reason is uh, avoiding the five or three-day waiting period. So uh, in Florida, we have a mandatory three-day waiting period and some counties extend it to five. If you want to avoid that, if you want to be able to buy a gun and walk out immediately, you have to have a valid concealed carry permit to be able to do that. Which, let's be honest. Yeah. (laughs) That's like the number one thing that we were like, yep. I probably had like seven people on Saturday that that was their motivation. They were like, I don't really want to carry a gun. People don't want to wait. But I just don't want to wait when I buy guns. And I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. I agree with that, man. I agree. And then you go to like a gun show and you got to get it transferred somewhere or something. Yeah, so it's just a pain in the butt. For me, it's definitely the other states, right? Because we road trip and stuff with the kids. And if Mm -hmm. we want to go to North Carolina or something like that, like, I don't want to take that trip. You know what's funny? Without a gun on me. Like, that just is on, scary. On Thursday, I had a class in Tampa, and my Tampa location is very dangerous, okay? So, um, uh, two men come in, like, two big bodybuilder dudes, right? And one of the bodybuilder guys, he says to the other, he says, like, is Rebecca, I don't remember her name, but is Rebecca going to come in? And the one guy was like, no, she's going to go for a walk around the block. Oh, heck no. And I said, I was like, she can't go for a walk around this block. I said, this yeah. is extremely dangerous here. Not a here. Young girl, yeah. And, and he's like, oh, really? And I was like, yeah, bro, this is no, this is no freaking oh, joke. Oh, because they're like, they're like, oh, get some exercise they're from, in. They're from Vermont, right? Yeah, they don't know. So they're just like, I don't know what Vermont is like, but 
Like, this is Tampa. Like, I've literally seen a dead body in front of my office when I went there for a class one time, okay? Dead body with freaking tape and stuff. Remember the time the guy pulled the gun out on the dude walking in front of my office? No, I don't remember. Okay, this guy was walking, and a car, I was throwing garbage away, and all of a sudden, I hear a car just slam on the brakes. And I was expecting, you know, when a car slams on the brakes, to hear the big crash, like a car accident, right? So I looked up and the cars just stopped in the middle of the road, smoke everywhere. And I was like, what the hell is happening? So then the guy floored it. So now his wheels are like spinning. And I'm like, what is this? must not pay for his own tires. What is this person doing? So then he flips a 180, takes off down the road. And then there's like this Montessori school right across the street. There was this young black dude walking across, walking right there. And the car pulled right in front of him, hopped the curb. And a younger white dude jumped out, had a handgun in his hand, and he runs up to this black dude that's there, and he goes, hey, man. And then he goes, ah, oh, sorry, dog. I thought you were somebody else. And then he, like, puts his hand up like this. The two dudes shook hands and, like, hugged. And then he got in his car and drove away. Tiffany, I am standing there like, what the hell am I watching? You're going to hug the dude? That dude was going to murder you right in the street in front of everybody. And clearly, I think this is a gun, uh, drug-related thing, right? He must have thought this other person was somebody else. He was going to go murder him right in front of everybody. And once he got close, he realized it's the wrong person. Yeah. Hey, Renee. Nice to see you. Uh, so Waters Avenue, but this is the thing about Brandon, like Brent, this Brandon is like supposed to be, you know, totally fine, but it's getting worse and worse. Like it's crazy. Like every area is kind of like, it's like expanding. Whereas before I feel like it was more like in tight pockets. Yeah. Like centralized in this pocket, but it's like going like this. Right. And it's the same with like the homeless population. You used to just kind of see it downtown Tampa. Now it's like, no, now you're seeing it. It was like all of a sudden, okay, now we're seeing it in Brandon. Now it's in Valrico. It's like, what? This is crazy. Like, dude, when I pockets. went to the, when I went to the Walgreens a couple days ago to buy deodorant, <laughs> cause I forgot to order you some, I parked my car. And there's homeless people like in between the Walgreens and the gas station right there. There's homeless people just living there. There were two other dudes there. And I was like, what the freaking hell is happening in Valrico, man? It's like, whatever. I don't have anything against homeless people. But the problem is like when you're, I drove by someone the other day and I was like, crap, like make sure the windows are locked. Make sure the windows are locked. Because he's like screaming obscenities and like tossing back and forth. You could tell he was on stuff. And I was like, shit, man. Like, what is this guy going to do? Like, holy crap. Lock the door. Lock the door. I'm out of red light. I'm like, ah. You know, it's it can be very, yeah, scary. I do have a problem with homeless people. You can be homeless somewhere else. Yeah. But, like, I don't know, well, there's man. there's places kind of that help the homeless people. That's where you people. should be. Like, and down by the Salvation Army yeah. and stuff like that. And not, well, because what's happening, too, is they're... Pushing like, them out because there's so many. They're staying in little bushes that are, like, this big by our playground and stuff. Like, that's just crazy. You can't do that. Like, the kids are, you know, running home terrified because all of a sudden they're playing at the park and a freaking homeless guy wakes yeah. up out of the bush. It's pretty scary. Do you have anything else? I yes, just epic really road rage. we got to show oh, this. Okay. It's a crazy road rage shooting. Yeah. This is why you just need to, it doesn't matter what happens in road rage, smile and wave and never, ever stop your car. Now, praise God that that guy sucks at shooting. I don't, I, I actually don't think that he was trying to shoot. You think he was just trying to shoot vehicle? the engine and mm-hmm. disable the vehicle? He was just trying to shoot the car. But 15 bullets he shot, 15 rounds in the street where right. there's other people. And that was in front of a church. That's where the camera was. So thankfully, that woman that was driving the car, the victim, she was able to drive away. But, uh, man, this is no joke, man. You do not know who you're dealing with. People are extremely unstable. They might kill you, 
just because you flipped them off, you brake checked them. So apparently what happened is that woman passed that other car while she was driving mm -hmm. and that made the person upset. If you remember, Art, we had a student like just before Christmas who got shot on I-75. And allegedly what he claims happened is he was driving in the far left-hand lane uh, slowly. So he is the worst that, kind of person in the world. That is very aggravating. You know that they're proposing a law that would make it illegal to drive continuously in the left-hand lane well, in Texas Florida? Well, Texas is like that, right? Yes, and it should be it like that. It's so awesome in Texas when we're driving. Literally. Like, Ooh. I was driving back from Tampa the other day, and I was in the far right-hand lane the entire time doing like 90 miles an hour, and I thought... Why am I why doing? Are you in the why am I doing ninety in the right hand lane, and all you idiots are doing seventy in the left hand lane? Just move over, and then we yeah. could all drive it's fast. Because people don't know. People don't know that law. So dumb. Because then when you drive, they're like, like they have no clue. No, but I did. But it is one of the most aggravating things. To I be did stuck behind somebody I, in the left lane. When I got on the freeway, I'm in the left hand lane, and there's like this old couple in front of me. Okay, and they're driving all slow, so I freaking flashed the horn and, and honked, but they wouldn't, they weren't moving. So I moved on the other lane to go around them. <laughs> and Tiff, when I pulled up beside her, the woman was in the passenger seat, she was holding on like this. <laughs> and the husband was like, and as soon as I passed them, they like got over real quick because they were like, oh my God, they're coming for us. <laughs> it was so funny, man. I gave that, and all I did was honk and flash lights, but. <laughs> That, but yeah, but people are scared because <laughs> we see scared. stuff like this all the time on the news. <laughs> yeah, it was funny. Oh my gosh. Okay, I don't hey, know where I was going. Uh, what was I going to say? Hey, Dr. J and Julie. They said they sorry they missed us. They watched from the beginning. Nice to see you back. Yeah, Good so. Good to have you on. Super, super crazy. Super to, crazy. Yeah, but in Texas, when we did drive through to go to Arizona, that was a super awesome thing. It was so have. awesome. Like, people just automatically. Got over immediately. They did a pass, and they got over. I was like, oh, gosh, I didn't know that it was a law there. And then I saw a sign that was like, you will get a ticket if you're in the left lane and not passing. I'm like, oh, this is nice. Yeah. Yeah, so I would love that law to be passed. Yeah. All right, guys. It's time. Our kids are waiting for us because they want to go on their hover carts and rollerblades around the neighborhood. So we've got to go. So that but before you go, make sure you guys go to the new oh, yes. Warrior Cloud YouTube channel. I need 100 people to subscribe to that YouTube channel because I'm going to go live Thursday with a dope ass training for firearms instructors. Yes. And I got to have 100 people to go live. Even if you're not interested Ooh. in growing a firearms training business, go do it. It's going to be amazing. Happy anniversary, O-Town Racer. I forgot that it's Valentine's tomorrow. Ryan has zero plan. Well, you got classes You're going to get the best sex of your life. Oh, please. I can't. Okay, I'm going to hold you to that. I'll let you guys know how it went next week. <laughs> See you next Monday night, guys. Enjoy your uh, week, and happy Valentine's Day. I am a sheepdog. I have a subconscious and moral burden to protect and help the people around me. I believe in safety, responsibility, and the God-given right to defend myself and others from the wolves who seek to steal, kill, and destroy. I defend the Second Amendment by properly representing what it means to be a gun owner. I will put aside my doubts, my fears, and my excuses. I will be trained. I will be ready. I will be confident, and I will be prepared. While some sheepdogs are born, most are made. Becoming a sheepdog is a choice. A new way of thinking and a new identity. An alter ego. Okay, so apparently we're getting the dog. Because people are demanding it. So we're going to show you guys Coco, who is officially... another text today. Oh! oh. I got another text message today. Here's the Coco. From somebody saying that they found Coco. Really? And they, yeah, and they want me to send them $35 to get the intelligence of where, who has Coco. And I was just harassing them Look, and annoying this is, them. This is Coco's tracker now. She's got a tracker so we can ping her if she goes missing. Ping, yeah. ping. So, yeah, Ryan keeps getting text messages letting us know that they got Coco. So there's Coco. Thanks to everybody for helping us find her. Okay. Good Hi. night, guys.